All right, it's Mars, lover of all things iconic, and welcome to another episode of The Creative Creative, which is a podcast where creatives kick the shit about all things creative, getting to how you, me, and we bring our imaginations to life. Welcome back to another week. I'm happy to be back. And this week, we're going to be getting into creative blocks because I've talked to two different creators, one from London, one from America, and we're all kind of dealing with the same thing of creative block. We're not inspired as much. There's so much going on in the world that sometimes we just feel silly talking about fashion and beauty products and not talking about what's really, really important. So they can kind of like fuck with the content you make or just fuck with your whole creative process in general. And I want to kind of touch on that and see how that's affecting other people out there as well. But before we get into our main topic, let's get into our dream gig, which is a segment where we manifest all of the dream opportunities we want in the creative industry. It can be any creative industry from food cuisine to fashion to video production. It can literally be any dream gig that you as a creative want to manifest for yourself. And this week, my dream gig is to create a lavender fragrance collection with Lush. I went to Lush recently and they were showing me like this new spa that they have. And they had this book that is about the history of Lush and they had it open to a page that had Princess Diana in it. I had no idea that Princess Diana made a moisturizer with the creator of Lush. Like he had her bring in all of her favorite moisturizers and then they replicated like a product off of it and it's called um I think it's called gorgeous cream something like that but I was like oh wow and then Lush also has my favorite lavender fragrance of the moment which is twilight it comes in like this black spray bottle but it's such a pure sweet but also light kind of lavender and I would love to create different kinds of lavender fragrances with Lush so it can be fragrances it would be their soaps their bath bombs like I would just like to have a whole lavender collection with lush and i just think it would it would eat like the girls would eat it up so lush hit me up and welcome back and we're going to get into our newest segment which is creative community where you the listener and the viewer send in questions about your creative process whether that be advice or whether it's just like some random questions like what's your favorite designer or your favorite food so we got a few questions this week so let's get into it so we got quite a few questions this week on instagram from danny underscore alvarez 222 and they had a lot of great questions and thank you danny for tuning in and thank you for sending in questions because the rest of you did not quit playing send those questions in like we want this to be interactive we want this to be like a community for everybody so let's get into josh's question so josh's first question is what is my fave fashion collections and i just jotted down a few here so the first one would be Mugler fall winter 95 that is a collection with um the robot suit that Zendaya just wore for the Doom premiere. Um, and it has like a whole bunch of iconic looks, but I love that collection because it's just very timeless. It often shows up a lot. I remember when I went to see Beyonce for the I Am um Sasha Fierce tour. I am Sasha Fierce tour. Um, she had Mugler do a lot of looks for that tour. Um, and a lot of them came from or was inspired by that collection. Another one of my favorite collections is Louis Vuitton Spring 2001. And this is a collection um, that Mark Jacobs did with Stephen Sprouse, where it was kind of like the graffiti LV all over the bags. And the reason why I love this collection is, is because I vaguely remember when it came out. So I was an undergrad and I had just got a refund check, y'all. And I was just so obsessed with this Stephen Sprouse bag because at the like the launch or the, the premiere party or whatever, Agnes Dean, I was obsessed with her at the time and her style. And she had one of the bags. And I was just like, oh, I have to have this bag. And y'all was about to drop my entire refund check on the bag. I end up not doing that. You know, something stepped in. The universe was like, girl. Don't try it, but I didn't buy it. But that collection just sticks out to me, and it's still one of my dream bags. Like Rihanna just carried it. I feel um, what two or three days ago she just carried it, and I would love to have one of those um, Stephen Sprouse monogram bags. Like it's just an iconic collection to me. Another one would be Alexander McQueen Fall two thousand nine. That is where the models had like the 
the huge red lips and like the feathers and just the dramatics and the tailoring like everything is just it's so dark and gory and gothic but it's also so high couture and fashionable at the same time uh alexander rest in peace you're just one of one number one okay and last but not least, I would say Christopher John Rogers Resort 2024. And this is one of my favorite collections because I was invited to the show and I saw the clothes come down the runway and I saw the workmanship and the tailorship and the intention and everything that Christopher wanted to get across in that collection. It came through to me and I was just so honored to just be in the room to see it come down and to be valued in a space like that. I just, yes, that's going to stick with me forever. Next question, fave designer. My fave designer, I always say, is Mark Jacobs. And I feel he's my fave designer because he just has his finger on the pulse. He's a trendsetter. He sets trends. He changes the way that people dress around the world. And I think that's very powerful. And he's, I don't know, he's just he doesn't lose steam at all. Like he's been doing this for a very long time and he's stay at the top pinnacle of everything. Like nobody's taking him out of his spot. He's just always, you know, he's the one. And now that Chanel is looking for a new creative director, a lot of people are saying that it should be Mark Jacobson. I can see that happening. I would prefer Sandy Liang, give a woman a chance. And I feel like she would bring just a different consumer to the brand but also satisfying like the old consumer i just think she would really do well there um but mark jacobs will also be a great choice next question is my favorite up-and-coming designers that i want to shed light on i have a few here first one being jordan willis jordan willis is killing it right now scissor has worn their stuff JT has worn their things. Um, Jada Wada, a lot of the other Instagram girls have worn her shit. And she's just killing it right now. And it's going to continue to kill it. And it's just like, I can see her elevating the look of the brand and elevating the aesthetic and making it like more of a long-term thing as opposed to trendy. Because that can happen a lot, but she's here for the long run. So Jordan Willis, um, Jack West Ekbobli, beautiful knitwear, beautiful tailoring. Sorry, y'all. These allergies are cutting up once again. Uh, one moment. Hold on. Okay. Now that I've blown my nose on the mic. <laughs> um, Jack with the Bobbly, beautiful knitwear, beautiful tailoring. And he's one to watch. So watch out for Jack, Jack West. Another one is Ido, another knitwear brand. Um by Odie, and Odie's just, she was on one of our recent episodes talking about her newest collection. Also, watch out for her. She's making knitwear so sexy, so fun, so attainable, and I don't know, she's just giving it a new aesthetic and a new niche for a younger audience, and I love that because knitwear is, you know, usually considered for older people, and I love that she's, like, considering a young consumer. And last but not least, I would say Joara Allen. Um, Joara Allen, he is based in the UK and he's Rihanna's favorite designer of the moment. And I absolutely love his pieces. Like they're very like sustainable and they're very like unpredictable. Like they don't have, like they tell their own story by who's wearing it. And I really, really love that. Like a, the one of his shirts that Rihanna wore had, um, they're like clothes by safety pins at different places. And I was just like, wow, just the way the safety pins are placed on the garment, just the way that the garment is on the body and how we can have different personalities depending on how you want to wear it. Like I'm really looking for Gerard Allen right now. And I would love to have some of their pieces. Next question, best fashion house. I would say Louis Vuitton. And I say Louis Vuitton is the best fashion house is because they're not afraid of diversity. Like I love that Virgil had the opportunity to be creative director of menswear. And now for real is doing that. It's just like a lot of these fashion houses they uphold white supremacy and they don't give um, black designers and designers of color chances. So I think LV is ahead of the curve with that because it always works out in their favor. Like everybody is wearing the for real collections right now. Everyone was seeking after the Virgil Abloh Louis Vuitton collection. So it just works out in their favor when they're diverse. And I feel like Mark Jacobs, um, when he was the creative director um, at Louis Vuitton, he kind of started a lot of that. Like, he brought in for real to do a shake, the eyewear shades, sunglasses collection. He brought in a lot of uh, 
talent of color. And I'm glad that they're continuing to do that because again, black people and people of color, we set the trends nine times out of 10. So it would be smart for you to put us in those positions to continue to do that. But child white supremacy be eating the girls up. So that's that on that. And the last question is mistakes that designers make that we can learn from. I would say following trends and not sticking to your house codes. Like I'm going to use Demna from Balenciaga as an example. Like Demna has had their moments where they follow trends and, you know, it works for them and the sales go up and they go through the roof, but it's just kind of like it's trends and you want to do something that's going to sustain your house. Like you don't want to just keep depending on trends all of the time and you want to um stick to what you know. So Demna said he's going to kind of go back to what Balenciaga is known for, which is couture and tailoring and just well-made clothes as opposed to being so trendy all the time so we'll see but i feel that's a designer that stakes make um i will even use um what's that brand name blue marine blue marine stepped into the y2k trend hard stop like that was just what they were known for when they came back and you know the y2k trend is kind of passing now and blue marine is left in the dust so it's just kind of like participate in trends you know because you want those sales to be where they are but also stick to what you know in your house codes because one thing about fashion one day you're in and the next day you're out and when you stick to what you know one day you're aesthetic and your house code is going to be on trend and you're going to have your moment um but just play like use your house codes to play with the trends don't let the trends dictate what you do with your designs and that's the last of the questions for creative community please continue to send me these questions i love answering them um you can send questions in our instagram comments at the creative creative pod or you can email us at the creative creative pod at gmail.com please put creative community in the subject and we'll get those questions answered thank you again danny underscore alvarez 222 for sending in those questions and please please send me in this is going to be a great segment of the show especially when we get guests coming back to the show and we can ask guests um, some questions that you may have so okay so let's get into creative blocks so uh, i a friend from the uk was in new york recently and we met up at the Mama Museum and we were just talking, catching up. And I was talking, I was like, you know, I haven't seen you online in a while. And they were like, you know, I've started a new job and I just haven't been all that inspired lately. I sometimes feel very silly talking about fashion when there's like genocide happening and so much going on in the world that I just feel like what I want to talk about is just it's not needed right now. And I related to her on that because it's like, there are many days where I want to talk about certain things and I'm just kind of like, but I want to, there are certain days where I want to talk about things, but then it's just like, on my brain is Palestine and Congo and Sudan and just the dead bodies that are coming across my timeline all of the time. And just like that feeling of being like, you, you can't do anything. You can donate, you can make content about it. You can do all of these things, but it just, none of it feels like enough. And there's also an election year coming up. And it's just like, it's scary because there are a lot of Trump supporters out here and Joe Biden is supporting genocide. So I get why people don't want to vote for him, but it's just kind of like this country is in such limbo and it's a scary time. Like we're living through scary times. Even the work market is finding a job is difficult and it's hard and just living in general can be a lot. So I get that being a creative block, but what brings me back to making art and continuing to create is that I oftentimes and this is a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to disconnect because the people in Palestine, Sudan, and Congo, they don't have the privilege to disconnect from things. Like they're going through them. But us over here in America and in other countries, we have the opportunity to open up TikTok and just scroll a bit and just get our mind on something else. And I have to realize that I am that for someone else. Someone wants to see my content and they scroll and disconnect. Like that's going to help someone's, I don't know, mental health. That's going to help someone's day be better. And it's going to help me as well as a creative to keep pushing my ideas out there, to keep putting things out there. Um, that makes me happy. So I have to, you know, I can acknowledge the genocide and all of the horrible things that are going on in the world. 
and will continue to do so. But I think it will be in my best interest to also continue to create just because that's what makes me happy. And that's what makes people who support me um, happy as well. Um, another thing that causes creative blocks is working a nine to five and then getting off work and then having to like put your brain into a creative space. And that can be very, very hard because if you work a nine to five and you work hard and you do your job and you do well at your job, that's tiring. Very, very tiring. So when you get home, you don't want to like, it's not that you don't want to do it. It's sometimes you just can't because I'm exhausted. Like my brain is tired. I'm tired of thinking, especially the content that I do and the type of creative projects that I do. Like it takes a lot of intention. I'm not doing anything like, I'm not just putting on a moisturizer and being like, oh, my skin plump. No, I am researching designers. I'm researching stylists. I'm researching photographers. Makeup. I'm researching so much. And it takes, it's like a school art project every time I create something. And I love that because I'm intentional about my work. Okay. What's the line say? Do nothing without intention. And I mean that. I do nothing without intention. But with that comes a lot of thoroughness and research and just being resourceful. And if you're working a full-time job like I was, it just was difficult some days. Like some days I could get off work and clock right into it, but there's just other days where I'm just like, you know what? I just want to watch Sex and the City and go to foot to bed. That's just what I want to do. But in this creative space, especially as a content creator, it's all about consistency. So I'm trying to get more consistent with putting out content every single day sometimes two to three times a day and I know lately I've been like slipping on the fashion again because of that feeling silly talking about it but it's coming y'all I'm gonna get right back into it because the creative block has surpassed me for the moment and I'm ready to like jump back into it and do more runway reviews and do more rare carpet reviews. I've been researching some old rare carpets and like going to do some throwback and bring them back and some rare carpets that some people have requested in the comments that they want me to do. So I'm going to get into that as well. And also mental health struggles can be something that, well, how do I want to say this? Mental health struggles is also another factor that can cause a creative block is because when your mental is not good, you're, you can still create, but sometimes you just like, you don't like the output that you're putting out because you just stop, you're not in a good space. And this also ties back into what's going on around you in the world. It could be very depressing. It can be very taxing on the mind and that can cause creative blocks. And when that happens, for me, the best thing to do is to see something new. Whether that, if you can afford to hop on a plane and go breathe some fresh air, Go do that. If you can't afford to do that, because I can't do that at the moment. <laughs> I like to take a walk in a neighborhood I haven't been in before. Or go see some art that I have not seen before. I went to the MoMA and I saw so much art and so many artists I haven't seen before. And I was just able to clock back into my creativity and be like, wow, you know, you know, there's a lot out here to grab onto and cultivate and put into the world and I want to continue to do that so seeing new being inspired by new things and seeing new things it kind of helps me with my um mental health struggles when it relates to creative blocks so if you can do that do that also if you can look at some old things that kind of make you happy like Madonna's Don't Tell Me video I'm always inspired by it it's one of my favorite music videos when I'm having like a creative mental health block I go and watch it. Like I have a whole playlist of my favorite music videos that I love and I go and watch them and they kind of like breathe life back into me and inspire me and get me ready to create on my own. And also a creative block can come from things moving so fast. If you are a social media content creator, things move too fast, especially in a fashion space. Like one day I'm waking up, Normani is on days. The next day, Molly Cyrus is on, I think Harper's Bazaar. Then the next day is another magazine cover and a runway show and all these. And I want to talk about all of these things, but I'm just one person and I'm not the type of content creator who just puts shit out to be putting shit out. Like I'm not gonna open my phone and be like, Molly Cyrus, look a mess. Molly Cyrus, this is cute. No, what is Molly Cyrus wearing? Who photographed Molly Cyrus? Who interviewed Molly Cyrus? Like, I have to read the entire article. So 
when things move that fast, you just be like, I'm just so behind. I'm not going to do anything. And that's where the creative block comes in. So I'm getting kind of better at just picking and choosing things that kind of resonate with me more than others because I can't talk about everything. Not on time, at least. Like, I can talk about everything, but it's going to take me a minute to get to it. It's going to take me a minute, and I have to be okay with that. And be okay with the creative blocks because creative blocks are necessary because I feel like they challenge us to dig deep into our bags and do our best work it's like they're not here for it for nothing like yes they're annoying as fuck yes they're going to get on your fucking nerves but sometimes you need to dig deep into your bag and pull out your best work like it's it's just it's the essence of who you are to challenge yourself and I know I'm my own worst critic and I'm sure a lot of you are as well a lot of creators we're, we are our own worst critics because we only know our vision and what goes on in our brain we are the only people who can um, put pen to paper for that. And it's just kind of like, yeah, we can show other people our products and get their opinion. And that's great because other outside opinions are great. But it's all about, at least for me, what do I think? Am I satisfied with this? Am I happy? Am I happy with what I'm producing and putting out into the world? And if the answer is no, use that creative block to turn it around to a yes. You know? Use it as motivation. Use it as a way to push towards the end of a project. And, and also, I think, use creative blocks as a sign that you're in the right direction. If you have a creative block about something, that means you care. That means you care to get it right. That means you're just not putting anything out into the world just because you can. You know, a creative block comes because you have to think and restructure your mind sometimes and just find inspiration elsewhere or just many different things so let creative blocks be your bitch don't you be a bitch to the creative blocks okay this podcast is such a dream come true i know i said it every week but it really really is it really is so uh, the podcast studio that i record out of has just reopened i booked a few sessions so i'm gonna be back in the studio I also have plans to get new equipment so that I can like start pulling up to different studios and different other locations, you know, when I get the funding to do so. Things are going to be, you know, looking up and up. And I also have to realize I'm a new podcast. Like this is only episode 12. This is only episode 12. So I have a long way to go and I'm here for the journey, here for the ride. And I'm glad that you all are here for the journey and the ride as well. Your support means the world to me and I do not take it for granted all episodes of the creative creative will re be released every wednesday on spotify and apple Podcasts, and every thursday on youtube i have not uploaded last week's episode to youtube yet i will do so when i'm uploading this one sometimes i just get behind um uh, my apology shout it's pride right now and i said i was not doing anything for pride I was going to be very low key, but babes, Mark Jacobs team called, another team called, like the, the girls are calling. The girls want me in the room and it's like some things I just have to show up for and show face because of the opportunities that I want for myself. So, which has caused me to be a little busy. I've gotten um, five orders. Yeah, I got, hold on. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I've gotten five orders. So getting those orders processed and getting them correct are... Because I do everything myself. So I order the shirt. I go take drop it off at this, um, the printer to get it printed. I go and drop it off at the embroider to be embroidered. Then I come and pack it up and all of those things. So it's just like a one-man show, which, great. I'm appreciative of that. Um, I'm appreciative of the orders as well. It just takes time. It takes time. Again, I have to keep reminding myself I'm only one person. See you all next week. And as we say at the end of F as we say at the end of every episode, leave here empty. Do not hold on to your gifts. Release them into the universe because you cannot take them with you when you're not here. Bye.